structure of parts of a beta sheet in the GFP protein interactive diagram of hydrogen bonds in protein secondary structure. Cartoon above, atoms below with nitrogen in blue, oxygen in red the beta sheet, is a common motif of the regular protein secondary structure. Beta sheets consist of beta strands connected laterally by at least two or three backbone hydrogen bonds, forming a generally twisted, pleated sheet. A beta strand is a stretch of polypeptide chain typically 3 to 10 amino acids long with backbone in an extended conformation. The supramolecular association of beta sheets has been implicated in the formation of the fibrils and protein aggregates observed in amyloidosis, notably Alzheimer's disease. An example of a four-stranded antiparallel beta sheet fragment from a crystal structure of the enzyme catalase. A. Front view, showing the antiparallel hydrogen bonds between peptide NH and CO groups on adjacent strands. Arrows indicate chain direction, and electron density contours outline the non-hydrogen atoms. Oxygen atoms are red balls, nitrogen atoms are blue, and hydrogen atoms are emitted for simplicity. Side chains are shown only out to the first side chain carbon atom. B. Edge on view of the central two beta strands in A showing the right-handed twist and the pleat of C-alpha-S and side chains that alternately stick out in opposite directions from the sheet. The first beta sheet structure was proposed by William Asbury in the 1930s. He proposed the idea of hydrogen bonding between the peptide bonds of parallel or antiparallel extended beta strands. However, Asbury did not have the necessary data on the bond geometry of the amino acids in order to build accurate models, especially since he did not then know that the peptide bond was planar. A refined version was proposed by Linus Pauling and Robert Corey in 1951. Their model incorporated the planarity of the peptide bond which they previously explained as resulting from ketoenol tautomerization. The majority of beta strands are arranged adjacent to other strands and form an extensive hydrogen bond network with their neighbors in which the N-H groups in the backbone of one strand establish hydrogen bonds with the C equals O groups in the backbone of the adjacent strands. In the fully extended beta strand, successive side chains point straight up, then straight down, then straight up, etc. Adjacent beta strands in a beta sheet are aligned so that their C alpha atoms are adjacent and their side chains point in the same direction. The pleated appearance of beta strands arises from tetrahedral chemical bonding at the C alpha atom. For example, if a side chain points straight up, then the bonds to the C must point slightly downwards, since its bond angle is approximately 109. 5 degrees. The pleating causes the distance between C alpha I and C alpha I plus 2 to be approximately 6A ring, rather than the 7. 6A ring expected from two fully extended transpeptides. The sideways distance between adjacent C alpha atoms and hydrogen bonded beta strands is roughly 5A ring. Ramachandran plot of about 100,000 high resolution data points, showing the broad, favorable region around the conformation typical for beta sheet amino acid residues. However, beta strands are rarely perfectly extended, rather, they exhibit a twist. The energetically preferred dihedral angles near equals diverge significantly from the fully extended conformation equals. The twist is often associated with alternating fluctuations in the dihedral angles to prevent the individual beta strands in a larger sheet from splaying apart. A good example of a strongly twisted beta hairpin can be seen in the protein BPTI. The side chains point outwards from the folds of the pleats. Roughly perpendicularly to the plane of the sheet, successive amino acid residues point outwards on alternating faces of the sheet. Antiparallel beta sheet hydrogen bonding patterns, represented by dotted lines. Oxygen atoms are colored red and nitrogen atoms colored blue. Parallel beta sheet hydrogen bonding patterns, represented by dotted lines. Oxygen atoms are colored red and nitrogen atoms colored blue. Because peptide chains have a directionality conferred by their N terminus and C terminus, beta strands too can be said to be directional. They are usually represented in protein topology diagrams by an arrow pointing toward the C-terminus. Adjacent beta strands can form hydrogen bonds in antiparallel, parallel, or mixed arrangements. In an antiparallel arrangement, the successive beta strands alternate directions so that the N-terminus of one strand is adjacent to the C-terminus of the next. This is the arrangement that produces the strongest inter-strand stability because it allows the inter-strand hydrogen bonds between carbonyls and amines to be planar, which is their preferred orientation. The peptide backbone dihedral angles are about in antiparallel sheets. In this case, if two atoms C alpha I and C alpha J are adjacent in two hydrogen bonded beta strands, then they form two mutual backbone hydrogen bonds to each other's flanking peptide groups, 
This is known as a close pair of hydrogen bonds. In a parallel arrangement, all of the end termini of successive strands are oriented in the same direction. This orientation may be slightly less stable because it introduces non-planarity in the inter-strand hydrogen bonding pattern. The dihedral angles are about in parallel sheets. It is rare to find less than five interacting parallel strands in a motif, suggesting that a smaller number of strands may be unstable, however it is also fundamentally more difficult for parallel beta sheets to form because strands with N and C termini align necessarily must be very distant in sequence. There is also evidence that parallel beta sheet may be more stable since small amyloidogenic sequences appear to generally aggregate into beta sheet fibrils composed of primarily parallel beta sheet strands. Where one would expect antiparallel fibrils if antiparallel were more stable. In parallel beta sheet structure, if two atoms C alpha I and C alpha J are adjacent in two hydrogen bonded beta strands, then they do not hydrogen bond to each other, rather, one residue forms hydrogen bonds to the residues that flank the other. For example, residue I may form hydrogen bonds to residues J-1 and J-1, this is known as a wide pair of hydrogen bonds. By contrast, residue J may hydrogen bond to different residues altogether, or to none at all. The hydrogen bond arrangement in parallel beta sheet resembles that in an amide ring motif with 11 atoms. Finally, an individual strand may exhibit a mixed bonding pattern, with a parallel strand on one side and an anti-parallel strand on the other. Such arrangements are less common than a random distribution of orientations would suggest, suggesting that this pattern is less stable than the anti-parallel arrangement. However, bioinformatic analysis always struggles with extracting structural thermodynamics since there are always numerous other structural features present in whole proteins. Also proteins are inherently constrained by folding kinetics as well as folding thermodynamics, so one must always be careful in concluding stability from bioinformatic analysis. The hydrogen bonding of beta strands need not be perfect, but can exhibit localized disruptions known as beta bulges. The hydrogen bonds lie roughly in the plane of the sheet, with the peptide carbonyl groups pointing in alternating directions with successive residues. For comparison, successive carbonyls point in the same direction in the alpha helix. Large aromatic residues and beta branched amino acids are favored to be found in beta strands in the middle of beta sheets. Different types of residues are likely to be found in the edge strands in beta sheets presumably to avoid the edge-to-edge -edge association between proteins that might lead to aggregation and amyloid formation. The beta hairpin motif The Greek key motif A very simple structural motif involving beta sheets is the beta hairpin, in which two antiparallel strands are linked by a short loop of two to five residues. Of which one is frequently a glycine or a proline, both of which can assume the dihedral angle conformations required for a tight turn or a beta bulge loop. Individual strands can also be linked in more elaborate ways with longer loops that may contain alpha helices. The Greek key motif consists of four adjacent antiparallel strands and their linking loops. It consists of three antiparallel strands connected by hairpins, while the fourth is adjacent to the first and linked to the third by a longer loop. This type of structure forms easily during the protein folding process. It was named after a pattern common to Greek ornamental artwork. Due to the chirality of their component amino acids, all strands exhibit right-handed twist evident in most higher-order beta sheet structures. In particular, the linking loop between two parallel strands almost always has a right-handed crossover chirality, which is strongly favored by the inherent twist of the sheet. This linking loop frequently contains a helical region, in which case it is called a beta, alpha, beta motif. A closely related motif called a beta, alpha, beta, Alpha motif forms the basic component of the most commonly observed protein tertiary structure, the Tim barrel. The beta meander motif from outer surface protein A. The image above shows a variant of OSPA that contains a central, extended beta meander beta sheet featuring three additional copies of the core OSPA beta hairpin that have been duplicated and reinserted into the parent OSPA beta sheet. Psi loop motif from carboxypeptide ACE A, a simple supersecondary protein topology composed of two or more consecutive antiparallel beta strands linked together by hairpin loops. This motif is common in beta sheets and can be found in several structural architectures, including beta barrels and beta propellers. The vast majority of beta meander regions in proteins are found packed against other motifs or sections of the polypeptide chain forming portions of the hydrophobic core that canonically drives formation of the folded structure. 
However, several notable exceptions include the outer surface protein of variants and the single-layer beta sheet proteins which contain single-layer beta sheets in the absence of a traditional hydrophobic core. These beta-rich proteins feature in extended single-layer beta-meander beta sheets that are primarily stabilized via inter-beta strand interactions and hydrophobic interactions present in the turn regions connecting individual strands. The psi loop motif consists of two anti-parallel strands with one strand in between that is connected to both by hydrogen bonds. There are four possible strand topologies for single psi loops. This motif is rare as the process resulting in its formation seems unlikely to occur during protein folding. The psi loop was first identified in the aspartic protease family. Beta sheets are present in all beta, alpha plus beta and alpha, beta domains, and in many peptides or small proteins with poorly defined overall architecture. All beta domains may form beta barrels, beta sandwiches, beta prisms, beta propellers, and beta helices. The topology of a beta sheet describes the order of hydrogen-bonded beta strands along the backbone. For example, the flavodoxin fold has a five-stranded, parallel beta sheet with topology 21345, thus, the edge strands are beta strand 2 and beta strand 5 along the backbone. Spelled out explicitly, beta strand 2 is H bonded to beta strand 1, which is H bonded to beta strand 3, which is H bonded to beta strand 4, which is H bonded to beta strand 5, the other edge strand. In the same system, the Greek key motif described above has a 4123 topology. The secondary structure of a beta sheet can be described roughly by giving the number of strands, their topology, and whether their hydrogen bonds are parallel or antiparallel. Beta sheets can be open, meaning that they have two edge strands or they can be closed beta barrels. Beta barrels are often described by their stagger or shear. Some open beta sheets are very curved and fold over on themselves or form horseshoe shapes. Open beta sheets can assemble face to face or edge to edge, forming one big beta sheet. Beta pleated sheet structures are made from extended beta strand polypeptide chains, with strands linked to their neighbors by hydrogen bonds. Due to this extended backbone conformation, beta sheets resist stretching. Beta sheets in proteins may carry out low frequency accordion like motion as observed by the Raman spectroscopy and analyzed with the quasi continuum model. End view of a three sided, Left handed beta helix A beta helix is formed from repeating structural units consisting of two or three short beta strands linked by short loops. These units stack atop one another in a helical fashion so that successive repetitions of the same strand hydrogen bond with each other in a parallel orientation. See the beta helix article for further information. In left handed beta helices, the strands themselves are quite straight and untwisted. The resulting helical surfaces are nearly flat, forming a regular triangular prism shape, as shown for the 1QRE archaeal carbonic anhydrase at right. Other examples are the lipid A synthesis enzyme MUXA and insect antifreeze proteins with a regular array of THR sidechains on one face that mimic the structure of ice. End view of a three sided, right handed beta helix, right handed beta helices, typified by the pectate lyase enzyme shown at left or P22 phage tail spike protein have a less regular cross-section. Longer and indented on one of the sides, of the three linker loops, one is consistently just two residues long and the others are variable, often elaborated to form a binding or active site. A two-sided beta helix is found in some bacterial metal aproteuses, its two loops are each six residues long and bind stabilizing calcium ions to maintain the integrity of the structure. Using the backbone and the asp side chain oxygens of a GGXGXD sequence motif. This fold is called a beta roll in the SCOP classification. Some proteins that are disordered or helical as monomers, such as amyloid beta can form beta sheet rich oligomeric structures associated with pathological states. The amyloid beta protein's oligomeric form is implicated as a cause of Alzheimer's. Its structure has yet to be determined in full, but recent data suggests that it may resemble an unusual two-strand beta helix. The side chains from the amino acid residues found in a beta sheet structure may also be arranged such that many of the adjacent side chains on one side of the sheet are hydrophobic, while many of those adjacent to each other on the alternate side of the sheet are polar or charged, which can be useful if the sheet is to form a boundary between polar/watery and non-polar/greasy environments. Thanks for watching.